Welcome back to Bailey with Guernsey Shipwrecks. I'm JP Fallays and today we're going to go out and have a look at a reef to start off with called Gabriel. It's on the east coast of Guernsey and it's just down near St Martin's Point. Normally there's plenty to see on this reef and it can be very colourful at certain times of year. I'm not sure about this time of year but we'll take a look anyway. I'm expecting to see spider crabs coming in now as well. We have landed slightly to the south of it, now we're heading in a northerly direction. This is out on the sand, it's just sort of sandy rocky area. This is where you expect to see some of the spider crabs. Here's our first scallop. This is a female spider crab, waiting for the males to come in. These aren't the biggest of scallops, but they're a us. They're well within the gauge limit of 100 mil. These are 105, 110 mil possibly. This one's actually come out of the sand. It's upside down, probably swimming away from something. But it's definitely a live one because I can see the frills hanging out and the eyes. Three minutes into the dive, and I'm at 26 meters. So let's head towards the reef now. These are all the females, you can tell they're females without even looking underneath because they've got the smaller claws. They're slightly buried in the sand here so they've been waiting for a while. I'm not quite sure why they do this, it must be just to get out the tide. There's a few here as well. This is also a really good area out in the sand to see these little cat sharks. There's so many of them around this area. And they're not even worried about divers, they let you go right up. In some cases they let you even stroke them. Some are a little bit more skittish than others, but this one seems absolutely fine that we're there. I think he's just relying on his camouflage, that's why he's staying as still as he can. Check out the black marble eyes. Here's another cat shark, that one's a little bit more skittish. He's swimming away from me, that one. Still in 26 meters and there's still more females, just bundles of females. When they do really get into um, large, large bulls, you do see hundreds in a bull. Um, they obviously come and breed in uh, big bunches, so we haven't seen these yet. We haven't seen the big bulls yet. Some more females. That one could even be a male actually. The claws are slightly bigger. That scallop's too small, I'll put that one back. a few more females just waiting I don't know if they've bred already I don't think they have bred here we go there's another scallop that swam away from something notice there was a starfish back there that's probably what it was swimming away from 
They have actually got really good eyesight. There's another female buried. Some more sharks as well. They can come in different colours. This one's almost got a small spot on it. And then also like a larger checker pattern as well. That's a nice decent sized scallop that. Um, obviously the bigger they are the more money you get from. Starting to see a bit more of these now. These are cuckoo wrasse or rainbow wrasse. They actually do follow you around sometimes when you're diving on reefs like this. This is the bottom of the reef. Just coming up onto it now. Hopefully you start seeing a bit more life and a little bit more coral. There's actually a, some decent sized boulders before you get up onto the reef on the outside. I want to go down and have a little look at that. There's a female spider crab trying to get up onto higher ground. Maybe she might be looking for a mate or something. Uh, not getting anywhere very fast. These are the sort of boulders I want to come down and have a look at. There's loads of life living around these, especially fish. That rainbow wrasp might be around here again, so have a look out for him. Oh, this is a decent sized wrasp. Probably four pound. Very skittish, I can't get close to him. It might be because my lights are on, so I might just turn my lights off for now. See what happens. Here we go, there's a wrasp under this rock as well. That's probably four, maybe five pound. It's quite hard to figure out how big they are, especially on camera. So I'll just tell you how much I think they are. It might be a half a pound out, maybe a pound out at worst. Ah, these are where all the males are. Look at the huge claws on them. Just hidden down between these boulders. Actually not far away from the females really. Probably the 30, 40 meters. Look at the size of it compared to my hand. Well within legal limit to take, but because they're coming in to breed, I'm just going to leave them. I do really like the taste of spider crabs, very sweet, but I'm going to leave them for now. I'm not going to find many scallops around this area, am I, in between the rocks. I might get the one or two, but I'm interested to have a look at these. This is another big spider crab. Probably asleep. See if we can wake him up. Nah, he's not asleep anymore. He wants to pinch me. I'll leave him be. Take a look at this, it's like a worm casing of some sort. The tide's whizzing past it, it's just making it oscillate. And it's quite funny when you see stuff like that underwater. Here's another scallop, far too small. Let's see if we can find this cuckoo wrasse again. The cuckoo wrasse, you normally get one, one male, which is the nice coloured one, and then you get like a harem of females, which are brown with normally sort of three black spots down towards the tail on the top. Normally black with little white dots in between. Oh, it's a more big grass. Let's try and film these. There's some absolute beauties here. There's three here. They gotta be six, maybe seven pound each. They're absolutely huge. I'm gonna see if my plan works and I'll turn my lights off, see if I can get closer. Yeah, with my lights on, it's giving too much backscatter. You can see the tide is starting to pull pretty hard now. Really do want to keep my lights on to see the coloration on these things, because some of them are awesome. Especially the dark pinky orangey color with white dots on.
It's amazing how they just lay on the rocks there. They tend to find them doing this all the time. I'm not quite sure why they do it, but they just lay on the rocks into the tide. So there's least resistance. Face first. See if I can get in front of them and just turn around with my lights on. I don't want to scare them too much. They might come towards me, but maybe not. Oh, look, there's a sea fan. Some sort of worm. That is a male cuckoo wrasse. They're quite protective over the females, so you get one of them. Divers normally get followed around by these things, and they're really cool, really bright and colourful, it's got to be the most colourful fish in the Channel Islands, if not the British Isles. It will sometimes go right up to the camera. This one seems a little bit skittish. I'm now on my knees right in front of this rock where the big wrasse was sitting. They seem to be a couple seem to be doing some sort of dance together. This one at the back. I don't know if that's the male or the female. I think the females are normally the biggest of the wrasse. But I'm not sure. But then again, look at the stomach or the gut on the, the slightly smaller one. It looks quite enlarged. I don't know if it's had something big to eat or it's pregnant. Is it ready to give birth? I really don't know. Watch how they swim together, right and close to each other, almost synchronised. They do seem quite relaxed that I'm here now, so I might try my lights and see if I can get some colour in them. Hope I don't scare them away. Mm, I don't, I'm not sure if the lights on was a good idea, because it's a bit backscatter now. Try and keep my torches down so they come in close, and I'll quickly lift it up. See if I can get the colours. They're coming back. It's weird how they're swimming right next to each other, really nice and close. Maybe they are breeding. Looking very, very close now. Maybe I'll leave them in peace now. Last thing they want is someone that's breathing bubbles around them and making a the right racket. See how close I can get to this big one. This one is absolutely huge. Thinking it might even be heavier than seven pound. Seems quite relaxed now. Even going to going in to bite a bit of food there. Oh, I'm gonna have to leave them. The tide's getting too strong now. I can't hold my ground against this. They're going to go back and lay on their rock again. Looks like they are. I think that one might actually be pregnant. It's starting to come up over the reef now, and you're seeing all these boring sponges and all the uh, the corals. Pretty cool. Need to look in the crevices, that's normally where you find the most life. 
Oh look, there's a coma fish. These are new to the Channel Islands. This has probably got young as well. That's why it's gone into the hole and laying across the hole. Trying to hide. And also look, we got white and brown uh, sea cucumbers. Look, here and here. See, I told you that the, uh, the brown and whites are normally found together. And there's a coma hidden in the back of the hole. Might have young. Coming up now. I've got two minutes left and I'm at 22 metres. So I'm coming shallower and shallower. As I come shallower I actually get more time given to me. I can stay at a shallower depth for longer. I'm coming up onto this reef now. Loads of different types of uh, coral here. Pretty cool there, there's a spider crab showing you how good they are actually climbing. Here's a cotton spinner uh, sea cucumber. I've actually seen a load of these now. For years I didn't see any and then all of a sudden I'm starting to see loads. It's always good when you see a different variety of uh, sea life sort of thriving. Here's an edible sea urchin right on the top. It's probably grazing on all this kelp, keeping it nice and short. It's literally right onto the top of the reef here. Just to my left is a big drop off. Goes down to, I don't know, 35 meter I suppose sort of tears its way down into the deep. I'm not going down there though, I'm going to stay up here. I'm just skimming along the top of the reef. Right, I should have looked at this a bit longer this one, but I think this is a trumpet anemone. It's either a trumpet anemone or a red speckled anemone. I didn't get time to look at it. The tide was pulling me along pretty quick. Whoa, no, look at the reef, it goes higher. This reef at low tide just sticks its head out the um, out the surface, and it's had a few boats in its day. Quite a dangerous reef. Yeah. Very little banter on the boat, and we get in again for the second. Really need to get some more scallops from Richard this time. So, fingers crossed. Let's go for it. The way we enter the water is we fall in backwards and we keep swimming down until probably three or four meters then we roll over. Um, this wasn't the way we we're trained it's just sometimes safer to get in the water and straight down. So as I turn around you can see the boat above me. What I do is I normally roll over and it's about this time I need to start equalizing down about the five six meter mark. So I don't know if you know this but you've got to equalize all your air spaces. And there's three air spaces really on uh, on me. One is inside my ears, which I equalise, equalise the pressure. There's also inside my dive mask, which I'm uh, breathing out my nose to equalise the pressure on that. And also inside my dry suit. I've got an inflator on my chest, which I press. Sometimes you can hear it going shh, shh, when I hit the bottom. This is also doing my buoyancy as well. As soon as you hit the bottom, you do normally find weird things, like this crab. Look at it, it's cut his claws out. It's been collecting stuff. Covered in plankton by the looks of it. First thing I do when I get in my second dive, always check my air. So 90 bar, that's not actually that much. Um, just as well, we're quite shallow here. More debris, an old crab pot. Oh, look at this. So randomly, I've only ever seen cottlefish eggs, which are these black things. They're covered in, um, in sepia, which is the ink that uh, the cottlefish have got. So you can see the eggs here, just a little ball of eggs. It's quite random, I only ever see them on a crab pot. Pretty cool. Almost like a miniature, miniature set of grapes in a way. But let's carry on, see what other weird things we can find. Like this enamel teapot. Wonder how long it's been down here. Probably quite a long time because it's got bryozones growing on it and single celled um, organisms, which is this rust coral on the front.
This crab's picked up a bit of camouflage. This is normal. Some of them actually grow seaweed on their back for camouflage. But maybe this one's just been tangled. decent sized scallops up against these little rocks as well. I've got, definitely got more on this dive than I did on the previous. So as divers we normally drop in separately, like 10, 15, maybe 20 metres apart, sometimes maybe up to 50 metres apart, but somehow we end up meeting up together. So here's Paul, he's got a decent bag. I can't believe how good the visibility has been lately. It's absolutely amazing. On my second dive, I'm always more conscious of my air because I know I've, I haven't got that safety margin. 60 bar left. I've got 18 minutes left and I'm in 21 meters. So, safe to say I'm gonna run out of air before I run out of bottom time doing some underwater sorting of scallops. The ones that are too small he just puts back. You can see Paul's checking his time as well now. So subconsciously we're both probably thinking, I see who goes up first. We end up staying down a bit longer. Mm, I can't really. I think Paul wins this one. I'm gonna have to go up. Yep, let's go up. Just seeing actually how good the viz is. I'm probably three or four meters above him now. I can still see him as clear as day. Let's go shallower again. I know I'm almost seven meters above him. I can kind of relate to the little crabs on Finding Nemo with the little air bubbles coming out the waste pipe. I love it when it's like this. So basically, Paul's a lot deeper than me. His air bubbles are um, expanding as they come up uh, towards less pressure. So they're not large bubbles, they're quite small bubbles at this stage. As he comes up shallower, the bubbles seem to stick together. These bubbles are great for a short duration, but when you're on a deco dive and you've got 45 minutes of someone else's bubbles coming up into your face, it does get a bit too much. Also, what they can do is it can make you want to float a bit more as the bubbles get caught underneath you. They try to lift you a little bit, which is never good.
That's the end of another night's diving. Um, thanks a lot for joining me again, and I'll catch you on the next tide.